Welcome back to Landing Zone Home. Today we're going to talk about running your generator periodically to keep it in tip-top shape, how long you should do that, talk about the fuel, talk about stabilizers a little bit, so stick around. I'm going to start the video by giving you the biggest takeaway tip that I have, and that is fuel. So if you ever went out and tried to crank up one of your small engines and everything looks fine, but it still will not run, even if you pour a little bit of gasoline in the carburetor, which is a trick that you can do, and it runs only just a few seconds and shuts off, then that tells me that you probably have something going on in the carburetor. Uh, more likely, it's uh, what's called varnishing, where some of the small valves and things inside there have a buildup of what's left over from ethanol gasoline. You know, today's gasoline has ethanol in it, which collects in your carburetors when you let it sit, especially if it's sitting a long period of time, two or three months or over the winter. So it's good to use this non-ethanol gasoline, which doesn't leave that residue in the carburetor. Now I do use a fuel stabilizer, usually use Stabil, and it works real well. Using the correct fuel is going to ensure that your generator and any small tool is going to be in tip-top shape. Okay, I put a small amount of fuel in the generator. About 12 or 14 ounces is all I put in there, enough to run 20 minutes or something like that. I don't like to leave a large amount of fuel in the tank because I'm not sure how long it's going to sit there before I get around to cranking it again. And when I do run it, I want to make sure I have some fresh fuel on hand to put in there. So my battery is dead. It's been dead for quite some time because if you don't charge these batteries on a frequently basis, they're just not going to last long. And they're pretty cheap batteries that come with these types of generators. I could buy one that's better, but uh, you know that would be $80 or so. So I'm not going to replace this battery. What I do is I have this Genesis Boost. It's by NOCO. And it is really great. I carry this in my truck, not only for uh, jumping the battery in the truck if I need to, but if I need to jump someone else's vehicle, I really don't want to hook my truck up to their vehicle. So this will uh, work great for that. This is the uh, 2000 amp model, which is supposedly good for all cars and for small and medium range diesel vehicles. So it is great for that, and I'm going to hook this up and uh, see if this generator will turn over and crank. I haven't had it cranked in about four months. Okay, again, this is the uh, Genesis Boost HD by NOCO. I'm going to hook up the uh, clamps here to the battery. The positive, then the negative. And it has an on-off switch right here. And I think it's good to go. I've got a green light there. I think it's just a matter of getting some fuel pumped in there. running good now. Well, I'm glad it cranked up, and it should have because uh, I've kept it in good shape. 
Before I hook up the RV, I thought I should explain a couple of things here. And one is that I'm having to use an adapter because I've got this 30 amp connector here, but it's not the R typical RV thing. So I've got an adapter that I'll use for that. And I'm also using my Progressive Industries EMS system. And these have more than just surge protection. They also do an analysis of the power that is going to your RV and it will analyze the power for about two minutes before it actually trips a breaker inside the unit to allow the power to flow into your RV. If there's anything wrong with it, it'll stop it right there. So if I were to plug this in just as it is right there, it would give me a fault, a ground fault error because the ground on the generator is not bonded. So there are some, uh, you can buy a, a bonded plug or you can make your own. I made my own right here. And what this does is this uh, bonds the ground to the neutral and allows the EMS to uh, function properly. I'll place a link in the comments on how to make this plug and to give you a little more information on it. Because if you ever try using one of these EMS systems and you don't have that bonded ground, you will get an open ground fault. So we're plugged back in. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on and typically I run 20 to 30 minutes under load. In the summertime, it would be the air conditioner running, but here it is in the early winter, moderate temperatures. I'll cut on uh, one of the heat pumps, one of the uh, air conditioners that has a heat pump and run that. So let's run it for about 20 minutes, then we'll come back and we'll do a wrap up to the video. Now one of the easiest ways to determine if your RV, or in this case of my Airstream, if you have electrical power, and that is alternating current electrical power, is when you see the clock come on on your microwave. Okay, we have 30 amp power to the RV now. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the uh, heat pump. To put the generator under load. We we'll use that zone two and go to heat pump. Right now it says that it's 53 degrees inside the trailer and I'll set the thermostat to about 55. And you might have just heard the generator surge. That's the unit turning on. So the heat pump is on. pretty quick. I already, already feel uh, warm air coming out of it. So we'll let that run about 20 minutes. Well, I'm in the Airstream and the generator is quite loud. 
So I want you to know that's not the generator I use on the road with my uh, RV when we travel. That's strictly for around the house type of backup situations. I have another video that shows how I connect the, that particular generator directly to my power box and I'll put a link in the comments below directing you to that video. So there are a couple of things I wanted to just touch base on before we wrap this up but do this test theoretically every 30 to 45 days and honestly I'm not there. I'm lucky if I do it every two to three months and uh, that's worked out pretty well for me. For you it might be a different situation but just understand that it's all about fuel and proper storage of your generator if you leave it out in the weather you're going to have more issues. When I get ready to turn off the generator here in just a few minutes I'm going to shut off the fuel valve and let the carburetor run dry. That's the best way I know of to try to keep the varnish from building up in the carburetor is to let it run dry. I don't mind having a little gasoline left over in the tank because next time I run it I'll add fresh fuel and that'll kind of mix with the old fuel and I think we'll be okay. okay it's time to shut down the generator and I wanted to give you a little bonus uh, footage here and show you how that EMS responds when we pull out that grounded plug. So let's go pull out the plug. I'll show you the indications on the EMS. I'm going to shut the fuel off and let it drain the fuel out and it'll be shut down. Hope you found something in this video that was useful to you and if you did click that thumbs up and also go ahead and subscribe to my channel so you'll get notifications of all of my future videos and until next time thanks for watching there it goes test all done